ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another at-home edition of Rocket League Central. But this time, my barber has said, hey, hair, calm down a bit. And now it's got some sort of semblance of cohesion. Not a lot, just some at least. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and I'm here to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Rocket League. And did I say we had a good show today? Because we have a good show today. Grid Watch will be recapping everything European Season X for the RLCS Double Tap. We'll cover the career of Alpha 54. And of course, you know, we got the good community goodness in the breakout. Before we dive into all that, though, we got to talk to you about a new bundle Psyonix has put out. Of course, it's Fast and Furious. We've had this before, but it's even bigger now. So it's going to cost you a little bit more than as well at 2,400 credits. But for that, you get a three-car bundle, which includes the Nissan Skyline, the Dodge Charger, the Pontiac Fiero, and 17 decals. Now, I'm not going to list out all those decals because I already can't remember three things, let alone 17 more. But if you are a Furious fan, you got to pick this one up starting on June 17th. Now let's move on though, and if you missed any of the Season X for the European season, we got you covered right here. Last week, we recapped North America's RLCS Season X Regional Split, a neck-and-neck -neck struggle which saw several teams swapping the champion's crown back and forth like a hot potato. This week, we take a trip across the pond to Europe and look back on how their teams fared in this historic 10th season. And spoiler alert, it's going to be a lot less close than their Western counterparts affair. It was the season of BDS, the incredible squad who came out of nowhere to practically sweep the entire competition, winning more events than any other team in the entire world. But let's not get ahead of things quite yet. It all started in the fall, when BDS were not but a trio of young upstarts who had only just earned themselves a place in the RLCS. Fall Regional Event 1 was an early indicator of how things would go for the rest of the season. While Team Vitality were initially the prospective winners, having just come off of an excellent winning streak in the offseason and taking down Eternal Rivals Dignitas in the playoffs, everyone would have their expectations shattered when BDS beat them down 4-2 in the semifinals before repeating that performance again against top blokes in the finals. Today it belongs to BDS. In Season 3, it was the rise of clean rotations. In Season 5, we saw the past players of Dignitas take over. Will Season 8 be dominated by Spanish Bim Bam? BDS take regional number uh, 1. BDS once again trounced Vitality 4-2, only to achieve an even more definitive victory against the Vodafone Giants, crushing them in a sweep to take their second straight regional. It wasn't until Fall Regional 3 that Vitality would finally have their revenge, overcoming BDS for the first time and coming out on top in the finals. At the Fall Major, BDS faced some unexpected competition from Galaxy Racer, who came within a hair's breadth of eliminating them until the two-time champs brought it home and once again defeated finalist Team Vitality. Final few seconds for Vitality, they just want to keep this alive. They just want to keep it away from BDS, but Extra's got his hands on the ball. It's back to Alpha. That was the last bounce that they've got to play with. Into the middle, but away from Monkey Moon! The first Winter Regional followed a predictable pattern, as BDS yet again defeated Vitality to emerge victorious. This time, however, they got the pleasure of crushing their opponents twice in one tournament, thanks to the Winter Splits double elimination format. Winter Regional 2 was a time for Dark Horse victories, and for only the second time did BDS fail to walk away champions, narrowly losing to top blokes in the upper bracket and subsequently getting eliminated in a surprise upset against Team Queso in the lower finals. The blokes in Queso would battle it out in a close grand final set, with top blokes edging it out as the last possible game went into overtime. Archie shot just wide, Dementor sends it long and floating! Oh! And that's Cassio, the man of the tournament so far! The Frenchman wins! BDS defeat to the Vodafone Giants in the third Winter Regional Upper Finals made it seem like their reign had perhaps finally come to an end. But the team made an expert recovery, bouncing back in the lower finals, then winning two straight sets in the Grand Finals as if to say, we're not going anywhere. The Winter Major marked the fifth clash between Vitality and BDS, now bitter rivals for the title of Europe's best, and it turned out to be their closest battle yet, a seesaw match which came down to overtime in the seventh game. BDS did ultimately triumph, but it showed that they weren't untouchable. Other teams were indeed rising to meet them. Extra with a monstrous save keeps BDS in the series. That was Vitality's ticket, but it's been oh, stolen and no oh. Extra gets the winning goal. He saves his team at one end, 
and wins the major for them at the other. The inaugural Spring Regional came down to BDS versus Vitality yet again in the finals, with the Titanic Trio dominating once more in a 4-2 victory. They slipped up a bit in the second regional, however, losing to top blokes at the outset of the playoffs. And with no double elimination to save them, they were sent home early. This left Team Queso and Solary to duke it out for the top spot in the finals, resulting in Queso earning a long overdue win. And instead, wow. it's Team Queso. They've stopped playing. They know that they've done it. From unknown at the start of the season to unstoppable in Regional 2. Another upset would occur in the final regional of the season. For the first time, BDS did not make it out of the group stage unscathed, suffering a loss to Guild Esports. And in fact, it was Guild Esports who eliminated them in the semifinals, showing that yet another team had the multi-time champs number. Riding this high, Guild steamrolled the competition in the grand finals to earn themselves their first win of the season. Have been forced to trust oh. the process to take oh. losses. To add the exclamation mark, Devo sets it up. <laughs> Foe won't quite be there, showing some patience. But the process has worked. Guild Esports are regional champions, and they finally, after being so disciplined, finally the spring major. Fate seemed to stack the deck against BDS in the playoffs, tasking them with facing top blokes in Guild in the first two rounds, two of the few teams who had eliminated them at prior events. However, this time BDS was ready, outplaying their former betters to find themselves in the finals yet again, this time up against Solary. By then, BDS had built up the momentum of a runaway freight train and appropriately flattened Solary to take the major crown for the third and final time. BDS holding back, they know they've got to go the whole way. And it's dropped up to the corner, that will not be on the floor just yet. Monkey Moon, he's missed it. Extra does get a hit, oh! but it, it's going to be put down by Mark. The pieces were coming together, but BDS, hold off. Is any team in Europe capable of standing in the way of this unstoppable force for more than one series at a time? Well, they've been beaten before, so they can be beaten again, as the saying would go, provided another team has all the skills, teamwork, and guts to face down the Continental Goliaths at the RLCSX European Championship. So stay tuned, because you never know. History might be made before your very eyes. Now joining me on the line, yes, it's the mastermind behind the RLCS and all of its craziness, Randy Gibbons, aka Gibbs. Welcome back to the show, man. Leaf, I don't want to take all the credit. Not every format is mine, <laughs> okay? I just help consult on the formats, okay? All right, so it's not it's only like me. <laughs> so, like, everyone that you think is good was me. Everyone that you think is bad <laughs> was someone else. All right, so don't worry about that. <laughs> if you didn't say that right there, I was about to for you, because so. <laughs> I knew it was coming anyways. But yeah, man, it, it, you have been uh, had a big hand, of course, alongside the, the team at Psionics. It's been a, a crazy, crazy season, uh, oh, unprecedented. Yeah. We've never seen anything like it. We kind of touched on this every time we talk because it's so crazy. Uh, but, you know, looking uh, at the, the end of the season coming up, uh, disclaimer, we're recording this before the championships are happening, so by the time you see this, day one would have gone by, so we're probably really tired right now, Gibbs. <laughs> yes, it's going to be like a 10-hour-plus <laughs> day, because we got a lot of matches on, on that first day, so let's record this today. We'll worry about that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Exa exactly. That's a that's a future us problem, but that's a brand new format in itself, so obviously I know you had a, a big part in, in what went on this to make sure everything yeah. goes right there's uh no weirdness here let's talk about that real quick because it's best of best ofs best of best <laughs> it's of the of craziest yeah. thing yeah, yeah. Uh, Brent, walk us through this real yeah, quick yeah it's like the one format we didn't use throughout the entire year but it's also about where these teams landed right we're down to top six in na in europe where we know where these guys have landed we don't need to do like a double limb or anything like that at this point it's like all right you have your opponent Let's see who is the very best. And one way to find that out is a best of best of best of three, best of five, best of seven, mm -hmm. whatever it is. More games will determine the better team very likely. And obviously there's still room for upsets because of momentum and because of the pressure with all the money on the line. But we felt like that this was probably the best way to go about it. You have one life outside of a modified page playoff system where the three and four seeds get one extra life. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how these teams play out because obviously the top two seeds they have buys which is normally good uh -huh. but it's a brand new format so now the teams that they're going to play have already played in that format maybe they have figured out a couple uh things that help them along the way so maybe those one and two seeds are vulnerable we'll have to see so not just a best of five 
another one and another one potentially, <laughs> yeah. and then sometimes best of sevens. Yeah, to best do that of sevens too. later. Yeah, yeah so. <laughs> that is a lot of matches for these players, and uh, you know. But I feel I feel like I've heard players say that this is kind of something that they they want as uh, well mm. because it's there's a better chance to prove themselves. Do you think this is a grind for the players? And what, what's I don't know, what's I, the, from their perspective? So on Twitter, I saw a lot of chirping, and I think a lot of it was because the announcement came out right around the time when there's like, there is no world championship, there is no land, mm -hmm. and, and players were obviously bummed about that. Upset, so then they were just looking for ways to be more bummed. They're like, wow, that's a lot of games. I might have to play 21 games in one day. It's like, <laughs> buddy, in the fall split in Swiss, you had to play five best of fives on some days. In winter, like if you were in that lower bracket, you had to play three or four best the sevens in a single day so these players have been there uh pretty much every uh split so far so i think uh -huh. sure it, like it could be 21 games in a row but you're playing the same exact opponents throughout so you don't have to worry about trying to figure out like a brand new team at the same time so a little bit less there like i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal but we'll have to see when a series will go to those late games will some players excel we don't know Gibbs, thank you so much for joining me again, and uh, we'll be joining each other again for the rest of this entire week. Sadly, yes. <laughs>
Triple commit. Check. Everyone gets a touch. Check. Only one guy gets to collect that sweet internet karma. Check. We'll give it to you a full team effort, even if you didn't try to do that. Now our next one is coming from Mid Loki, who shows sometimes it's really just about wanting it more than the other person. Now, I want to also mention this was their rank up game, and they did confirm in the comments afterwards that they did get the, the final win in overtime. So congratulations, and this is why you should absolutely never give up. Teammates that want to forfeit after one goal, thank you very much. Finally, OMG Florida Wi-Fi brings us our weekly edition of That's So Calculated. Yep, looks pre-thought out to me. There's he had his eyes on the ball. There's nothing, no, no chance at all. 100%. Good job. Easiest goal he ever, ever scored. <laughs> Up next, let's take a look though at the career of Alpha 54 in double tap. Most players need years of practice and discipline to make a name for themselves. Experience is the best teacher, and after all, the road to success is a marathon, not a sprint. But now and then, a player explodes onto the scene, rising to prominence in no time flat. A player like Alpha 54, Team Vitality's latest member, a young French Dynamo who wasted no time establishing his Rocket League cred. Alpha's competitive Rocket League career kicked off in the spring of 2018, when he was only 14 years old. He spent a few months grinding before turning 15 and joining Team Savage, alongside Bluey and former world champion Devo. The trio clicked almost instantly, and by September of that year, Savage had already secured a spot in the Rocket League Rival Series. And it looks like the white flag has been flown. Tilt will just throw this downfield, but Savage will have as clean a sweep as you could ask for on their way into the Rival Series. If you're on existence, you have to tip your cap to Savage. They played near perfection in this entire series. They didn't, what, they allow one goal the entire series? That's very impressive. Not only is it impressive to not drop a game, but one goal. That, that's insane. Over the course of the next month, Alpha and the boys would strut their stuff by annihilating the competition in the sixth season of the RLRS, dropping only a single game and earning a free pass to the promotional playoffs, along with a hefty cash prize. All this just a mere six months after Alpha started officially competing. Gone from PSG, forms a new team with a former world champ in Devo. And they're looking to get back in to the RLCS. 10 seconds to go. It's holding here for Savage. They can hang it up right here and look towards the promotion tournament because they will be going with Red Reserve in the European Rival Series for a chance to get in to the Rocket League Championship Series. Savage fought their way into the RLCS proper, and their efforts were recognized. The following spring, the roster was acquired by FC Barcelona, giving Alpha his first official sponsorship. The team continued their streak of excellence, finishing second place in Europe for Season 7 and moving on to the World Championships. Blocked by Alpha 54. Turning around, if Vitality score with some time left, there may be a shot. Kadop is blocked. Fairy Peak up for this. Looking to the other side for Kadop. And it's right in front of Alpha. He knocks it downfield, picks up, you know, a uh, tip of the, I don't know, James. He scored another one. Just for, just <laughs> a for long fun. Ranger just with for one fun. second left. There we go. And then this goal explosion. Boop. Why did you ruin that? I wanted to hear it. No, you don't get that. <laughs> but Alpha, <laughs> the MVP, 
getting the hat trick. Unfortunately, Alpha's first ever world championship would mark the beginning of a brief period of stagnation for the young gun. While FC Barcelona managed to make it to the playoffs, they'd get sent home in the very first round in a 3-0 blowout courtesy of Cloud9. This combined with a disappointing placement at DreamHack Valencia in July possibly contributed to Alpha departing the team later that month. After a brief stint with Team Solo Mid, Alpha signed to Team Vitality in early 2020, replacing fellow prodigal player Scrub Killa, whose contract had expired a few weeks prior. And just like that, Alpha started to win again, and he started to win a lot. Not only did Vitality score second place in Season 9's regional, they racked up some big victories in the offseason, taking home the gold at big events such as the Rocket League Spring Series and the Rocket Baguette Summer Grand Prix. Allez, la première possibilité sera... Oh, attention, le bomb C'est Ferran oh qui va mettre ce but en or Ferran pour pas. conclure en deux temps, Ferran Non, le sauvetage, Alpha 54 Et attention, Carmen, on s'en va repartir très vite de l'autre côté. Bonne intervention de chaussettes. Oh là là, c'est la pagaille déjà dans cette overtime. Attention à Ferripi qui va cadrer Le but était grand ouvert, c'est Renaud Vitality qui remporte le Rocket Baguette Summer Grand Prix while most are aware of Team BDS's dominance of Europe during Season X, Alpha still had a very successful season, helping keep Vitality in a close second place, even stealing a regional win away from BDS, being one of the very few teams to do so. This ends up being done here, Endpoint or no, that they force Red and Vitality to fight for these, but they want Champions Field, we want Champions Field. Will we get it? Fairy Peak, over to Alpha! Alpha yep. says no! That'll do it. Sick pass, Fairy to Alpha. Oh, that's so well played. Alpha making the run already. Fairy Peak waits for the ball to just go over his right shoulder and then pops it into the middle. Perfectly struck. Alpha's career may be young, but he's already carved out a substantial place for himself in the European region. While he hasn't had a chance to prove himself on the world stage in a little while, one thing's for sure. When the time comes, he'll be ready to take on all comers as part of the legendary Team Vitality. Well, there's been a lot said about the European region this year, and most of it has been about BDS, but you cannot forget about Vitality and Alpha 54. I gotta call it, I was one of the first people that was on the case about Alpha. I had him as my MVP. I think my vote might have been one of the ones that swayed it for, for that year that he got MVP of the season, because um, it was very contested on who should have had it, but I saw his potential. The man is a madman when it comes to creative assistive play and supporting those corners and getting those plays started up. So the playmaker in him has always been there, and I think it's gonna be there for quite some time. So please keep talking about Vitality as well. But that is all the time we have for this episode of Rocket League Central. You can check out more of our content, of course, on YouTube and Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching. As per usual, I'm always very appreciative of you giving us your time. But for a little overtime action, here is your weekly backfire. Bum, 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 bum.